What's going on, everybody? My name is Michael LeVan. Thank you, as always, for joining me today. And what we are going to do is we're going to talk about serverless Kubernetes and AWS. What does that mean? Well, essentially what I'm referring to is with any cloud-based Kubernetes service like GKE, AKS, EKS, you no longer manage the control plane, which is where the API lives, where etcd lives, etc. And instead, you're really just worried about the worker nodes. And the worker nodes are pretty much what houses the pods and the deployments, et cetera. Pretty much anything that's running like your applications in Kubernetes is stored on the worker nodes. Now, for a long time, AKS, EKS, GKE, you were able to, you know, run your workloads, not have to worry about the master nodes, so you don't have to worry about updating the API and all that good stuff. You still have to manage the virtual machines in the EC2 instances for the worker nodes. Now you don't have to anymore. And to be honest, you haven't had to for a while, but I didn't want to create a video about this because I do think this is super important here. So first let's look at the Kubernetes architecture as a whole. Then we're going to go into AWS and we're going to learn how to deploy an EKS cluster with a Fargate profile. Let's go ahead and jump right in. All right. So if we're looking at Kubernetes as a whole, this is what the, the cluster essentially looks like on the left. You got etcd, you got the API, you got the scheduler. That's the control plane. People used to call it the master nodes. I don't really think that's used anymore all that much. But that's essentially, you know, right here, this whole bit is what's being managed by the cloud provider. So again, AKS, EKS, GKE, Linode, Kubernetes cluster, DigitalOcean has one. A lot of different cloud organizations are now creating this, you know, Kubernetes as a service type of thing. But usually what you have to manage more or less are the worker nodes. So for example, that's where the kubelet lives. That's where your pods, your Kubernetes deployments, everything, your applications that are containerized when they're running in Kubernetes, they're living on the worker nodes. Now that those worker nodes could be virtual machines sitting in ESXi. They could be EC2 instances sitting in AWS. They could be Azure virtual machines. It doesn't really matter what they are. They're just essentially a bunch of Linux boxes that are running this worker nodes. Now, the really cool thing is you no longer need this in AWS and GCP, for example, because GKE has autopilot. AWS has Fargate profiles. So essentially what we're going to be doing with the Fargate profile is we're going to be removing the need for these worker nodes. And instead, that's just going to be essentially serverless. <laughs> so it's going to be serverless Kubernetes. Sorry, there's probably some noise in my background because my dog is jumping around. She loves to do that apparently <laughs> when I'm recording. It's phenomenal. But all right, with that being said, we now understand the control plane, the worker nodes, now let's head over to AWS and let's actually set this whole thing up. All right, so we're at AWS here and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in EKS, Elastic Kubernetes Service. All right next, I'm gonna click add a cluster. I'm gonna create a cluster. I'm gonna give this a name. We'll call it YouTube EKS 92. You can choose the API version that you want. 1.21 is the newest in EKS right now. And then you can choose a service role. Now, I clearly have a few already, <laughs> but I'm just going to choose one of mine here. I'll choose the, the MJL922 one. Okay. But if you don't have a role yet, it's perfectly fine. Open up this user guide here and then create the role based on this user guide. Now scrolling down here, you can choose if you want to set up encryption or not. We won't do that. We'll just click next. And then we're going to choose our VPC. I'm going to choose my EKS CTL VPC. Scroll down here. Scroll all the way down. I'm going to keep pretty much all this default, public, etc. Because I, I don't really want to showcase the ins and outs of setting up an EKS cluster. I more or less want to show the Fargate stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click next here. I'm going to click next. Right. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to create. Now this is going to take a little bit to create. So probably pause the video, grab a coffee, maybe a snack, come on back. All right, so we are back here. That took, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 minutes or so, I would say. But our cluster is up and running and we are good to go. Now, funny enough, 
I feel like this is kind of an EKS thing. I haven't really seen this in other Kubernetes services, but when you create EKS, you're really just creating that managed Kubernetes service for the master API. It doesn't prompt you to like create worker nodes or anything like that. Whereas in other Kubernetes services, you're prompted as soon as you're creating the service to create the workers. But in EKS, it's not the case. So what we need to do is we need to go to compute. And then from here, we'll have two options. We can either add a node group, which is worker nodes running in EC2 instances that you manage, or a Fargate profile, which is pretty much serverless Kubernetes. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on add a Fargate profile. Then I'm going to give this a name here. Okay. Give it the pod execution role. Again, if you don't have one of these, simply just create the IAM role for Fargate. I have my subnets here. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click next. Now what's really cool is you can select a namespace to select pods from. So let's say you have, you know, three namespaces for three different applications. You could actually create a Fargate profile for those instead of just doing the defaults. But you could just choose the default as well if you want to. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click next. I'm going to click create. And this error comes up all of the time. Definitely wanted to showcase this because it does trip up a lot of people. As you can see, this subnet provided in a Fargate profile is not a private subnet. What does that mean? Well, in the Fargate profile, you can only have private subnets because that networking happens internally with the Q proxy. It's not going outbound or anything. It's everything's internal to the Kubernetes network. So those subnets must be private. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to copy this. Then I'm going to remove this subnet and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click next again. Put in my default, click next and create. Okay. So as we can see, our Fargate profile is now being created. So let's go ahead and give this a few minutes and we will be right back. All right. And that took maybe a few minutes or so, but if we go back to our EKS cluster, exit out of that, scroll down, we can now see our Fargate profile is active and it has been successful. Now notice here under pod selectors, we see the namespace is default. So any pods that are in the default namespace will be picked up by this Fargate profile. And with that, that's how you can set up serverless Kubernetes inside of EKS. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And we'll see you again next time.